Hello everyone, uh, this is Dennis again from Kapeka Agro and Livestock Farm. Uh, like we promised you, just, just need to subscribe on, on our YouTube channel, like, comment. For everything about rabbitry, for everything about rabbits, just need to subscribe to this channel, Kapeka Agro and Livestock Farm. Now, in today's episode, I just wanted to share with you some of the challenge we receive here at Kapeka Agro and Livestock Farm, mainly the diseases. Because so many people, so many farmers out there have received a lot of challenges with their rabbits. And this is because they have been encountered with diseases which they do not know, which they have not heard about. And at the same time, they do not know what to do about these diseases. At the end of the day, uh, they end up losing a lot of rabbits. So I just want to share a few things about this. How can you maintain this? How can you prevent diseases? First of all, uh, you, we, we, there is a way we, how we can cure rabbit diseases because they are, they are quite not so many, but they are there. Uh, before we talk about curing these diseases, how can we prevent them? Because the best thing could be prevention, and, which is better than cure. So if you prevent these diseases, trust me, you'll just have a, a free and fair uh, environment for these rabbits and you'll be out of diseases. So I just want to share with you a few challenges we get here at, at calf rabbitry uh, as far as the diseases are concerned. Uh, so basically, uh, for the starters, I would like to let you one thing. Most of the causes of the diseases uh, in our rabbit house, as you see here, is all about the hygiene. So you people need to make sure, control your hygiene, make sure that this rabbit house is always clean. It is always clean. That is the best solution out of, on, on how you're going to prevent each and every disease. So after making sure that the hygiene is, is catered for, make sure, mind about what you feed your rabbits. Mind about what you feed your rabbits because this is also a major cause of diseases like bloat in the rabbits which causes instant death of rabbits. So mind about uh, the hygiene, mind about the, uh, the feeds, and also mind about the spacing of the rabbits. Now for us, as you see here, I'm still behind our, uh, this is our sick bay, like you see here. We have some uh, medicines around me, uh, which help us at least give the first aid. I'm not a vet, but we have a vet at the farm, uh, whom we shall be interacting with, uh, with time, just let you everything. But uh, what, you should, what you need to know again, you need to be having a vet around your farm. Trust me, you need a vet because there is no way you can avoid diseases in your farm. So you need a vet, either a permanent vet or at least a vet whom you can access all the time you need them to come out and check and see what is exactly the problem. Because most of the diseases in the rabbits are not common in other animals. So it requires someone who has got some knowledge about them to help you out. And now for starters, like I told you, this is our sick bed. What do we do to prevent diseases? If we get to know there is a disease in a rabbit, uh, for example, most of the common diseases now, there is what we call coccidiosis. Some of you people call it uh, uh, diarrhea. It is quite common, but that one comes as a result of feeds and the hygiene still, because if the rabbits drop down their droppings and the urines and everything, and they still uh, smell it, in most cases, it will infect them with diarrhea or it, even pneumonia. So that is why I told you in the first place, we need to make sure that the hygiene is okay. So in this arrow here, you see here, this is what we call our sick bay. When we get to see any sick rabbit in the cages among the, um, among the rabbits, we have to isolate it first. So when we isolate it, we bring it to our sick bay here. So this is easier for the vet to come and pay great attention to these sick rabbits. And it, is, it will still prevent other rabbits from getting infected. For example, if a rabbit in this cage is infected with uh, maybe pneumonia, trust me, it is very easy for the next uh, rabbit in the next cage also to get the same and the same. And so it will keep on spreading in the whole rabbitry. So we do the isolation here. Like you see, we get them because uh, remember the way we detect them, uh, we have our, our workers who come and clean every morning, who feed them every morning. So when they come, they check that there is something, maybe pneumonia, of course, you'll hear the rabbit. Uh, like it's not, it, it's sneezing, something of the kind. Of course, they'll have to detect and pull it out of the cage. If it is uh, coccidiosis, you'll still even see the droppings will not be normal as they have been. 
So this, this is already a, uh, a sign or a symptom that this is, in, is not okay. Another sign could be a lack of appetite. If you put uh, pellets in these feeders and this rabbit, the next day you find them again there, then just know there is a problem with this rabbit because it has, it has not eaten. This rabbit is supposed to take these pellets uh, like 100 grams in the morning and 100 grams in the evening. So if you find out that at least it has not taken that, just know there is a problem. Isolate it, bring it to the sick, uh, sick bed, then invite the vet to come and check on this so that it, it can, she, she or he can take good care of it. Um, another thing, another disease, uh, most muscular disease, it is called bloating. Now, bloating comes as a result of a feed. It majorly depends on what you feed your rabbits because some people do not know what exactly. People, you go, you, you go and search everything. You can give them this, give them leaves, give them green grass, give them everything. Whatever they tell you, just come and feed your rabbits. It is okay. The feeds might not be uh, 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 very dangerous to the rabbits, but how are you feeding them? Because this, this rabbit is a monogastric animal. It does not gas. So whenever it eats a lot, it will, uh, the, the stomach will like enlarge, it will bloat, and it eventually it will die in a minute or two if you've not uh, noticed it earlier. So it is better, even if you get new rabbits and they are not used to the feeds you have, you just need to change the feeds gradually to what you want them to feed. Not just giving them anything. Everything will be okay. Green grass will be okay. Hay will be okay. Carrots, cabbage, everything the rabbits can take. But how do you uh, present them to the rabbits for them to eat? Not just bring everything, not giving them. Because this rabbit, when you put uh, this box of, full of pellets, it will still eat it. But it will bloat because it, it is too much for it because it doesn't gas. It will eat it, but eventually it will bloat. It will bloat and it will blow its respiratory system. At the end of the day, it will, it will have to die and it will die immediately. So mind what you feed your rabbits to avoid bloating. We once lost uh, over like 450 uh, rabbits in this uh, rabbit just in two days because of feeds. So bloating is just a dangerous disease. Uh, 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 it is not even a disease, but it just comes as a result of feeds. If you're changing feeds, change them gradually. If you're introducing a new feed to the rabbit which is not used, make sure you introduce gradually smaller, smaller, smaller pieces, smaller pieces until it gets used to it. And make sure you always have water in the cages. Water is a must. It's supposed to be there all the time. That is how you can avoid uh, such a problem. Then another problem is uh, mange. There is a disease called mange. This one is still uh, results as the same uh, as a result of uh, the hygiene. For example, if these sheets are not clean, the way you see them all the time. Remember, these rabbits are going to uh, urine, they're urinating here. The droppings are always here. So if it is not clean all the time, it will also attract other mites outside. So the way to prevent this, make sure that around your rabbit house, you don't keep chicken around them. Try to avoid the rats, try to avoid the cats, all those other animals which can bring more mites here so that it can come and cause uh, uh, these uh, woods and uh, metals here a little bit uh, rotten. So by the, t by the time they get them, these rabbits can easily attract mange. So when you check the rabbits, mange is always uh, signified when it's in, in, in rabbits. When you check the nails, the toys, at times the ears, some people call it ear canker. You always see it, for example, like this one here. Most of the people uh, do not know what causes this, because I received you many people asking me, my rabbit has got this. Now like this one here. It turns into wounds. Now this is one, it, it is in its, its late stages. It is very hard because we, uh, we, we did not see it in the first place, so it was not treated. So here, it, it is, this, this one is under treatment. That is why you see it is a bit recovering. But this is called mange. Most people see it. It is always uh, uh, here, uh, these nails. Then the, uh, you, you can see it is feeling the pain when I touch it. That is why it is uh, scratching. At times it is in the ears. At times it is here in the nose. That is called mange. And some people call it ear canker when it is in the ear. It can spread from the ear up to this place, the head. So by the time, you, if you do not uh, work on this and its early stages, it will be very difficult for you to treat it. Uh, like I told you, you need to be having a vet at your farm. Please try your level best and 
introduce a vet. Uh, when you look here, it, this is like our first aid box, where in case we detect a disease, uh, we try at least as much, even if the vet is not yet here, at least there are some measures we take depending on what, is, what has happened to the, uh, to, the, to, the, to the rabbit. So for diseases like uh, diarrhea, which, which, which could be coxidiosis, at times we use sulfur diamondine. This one is s dime. Uh, you just mix it with water and just give it to the rabbit just for first aid. Then if it persists, then you just in introduce uh, the vet to help you out. Then that mange, make sure you have soothing oil. Some people call it healing oil. You just smear all the infected areas of the rabbits, uh, the arms, the legs, the what, the nose and the ears and everything. You can also apply uh, ivermectin, inject, li inject like uh, one ml the rabbit for like maybe three days. Um, then there is also Baclin. Baclin can also help you with uh, the snuffles, the pneumonia and everything. It can help you uh, just put some droppings in the nose. Um, then uh, for wounds in case it has gotten any wound or it has been scratched by the cage and everything, you can apply hydrogen peroxide in the first place. Then after you introduce this spray, spray on the affected wound, uh, it helps you. So this one, I'm not giving you, it, uh, this is not a medical advice that you're supposed to do it because I'm not a vet by professional, but at least I know something about it. It's for a first aid. A few things you're supposed to be with. In your, in, in your rabbit house. In case you, uh, you see this, try to do this and this before the vet comes in. So when you do that, by the time you call the vet, at least this is like a first aid, you've tried something out. So it will help, help you out. Uh, you, all you need to do is just to subscribe to our channel, Kapeka Agro and Livestock Farm. For any information, contact us. We shall be farming with you. We shall be letting you know. Please don't struggle alone. Contact us, involve us. We are here to help you so that you can grow the rabbit industry in Uganda. Still Dennis, Kapeka Agro and Livestock Farm. Thank you.